and welcome to Marinsky March 2023, where every day in March we make a sausage recipe out of one of Adam and Stanley Marinsky's books. Last year we did home production of quality meats and sausage, which I think is one of the best sausage books out there. Stella gives you the how and why behind what you're doing in sausage making. But this year we're doing recipes out of the new book, 1001 Greatest Sausage Recipes which is a gift to us sausage makers and meat enthusiasts. Adam and Stan have traveled across Europe and North America for the last 20 years compiling recipes and they put it all into this jumbo book. What's even better is Stanley has sent me five copies to give away to you guys over the course of the month and all you got to do to get qualified is leave a comment in the videos and I'll find you and I'll send you a copy if you're one of the lucky winners. So, without any further ado, let's get into 1001 Greatest Sausage Recipes by Adam and Stanley Marinsky. Hello and welcome to the traditional USA Servalot episode of Marinsky March from 1001 Greatest Sausage Recipes. This one here is quite a bit different than the European one. It has no description in the book. When the recipes are side by side, they're quite a bit different. So maybe if you're a European and you hear serve a lot, you have something in mind. And if you're American and you have serve a lot, servalette? C E R V E L A T. Uh, servalette in mind is American. You might have something different than uh, European. But the European description, I grabbed off the recipe right beside it. So this is a different description. The European semi dry sausage very popular in Switzerland and equivalent of American summer sausage. Definition covers countless recipes and sausages with the name Servalot made in many countries. You call you can call this sausage Thuringer, Thuringer Servalot summer sausage or Servalot summer sausage and all of the names are correct describing the same type of sausage. So that means we probably don't need to get hung up on the technical process of this because I feel like there's probably quite a big variation in the different types of serve a lot. Um, but this is gonna, the American one from the book. So what we're going to do is I have some pork trim that just fell down and then this pile right here is the lean beef. The pork's going to be kind of coarse, the beef's going to be lean and we're going to deviate from the recipe a little bit because I am concerned that these aren't going to be ready in time. But in the traditional recipe it wants you to take some back fat and salt it and dry it for a couple weeks and then cut those into half inch cubes and put them in. Um, they're just going to go in as half inch cubes into the recipe without the salting and drying because I'm going to salt and dry them with the salt that's in this recipe if that makes sense. So they're in the freezer right now getting real nice and firm. These just come out of the freezer so I'm going to grind the pork through the coarse plate. Yes, so I'm going to grind this pork through this coarse plate. So this one is just pork trim. It's not pork shoulders. You could use pork shoulders if you wanted to, but this is just what we got from squaring up cuts. You should be picking pretty nice um, stuff. Like you don't want something like pure pork hocks because they got a lot of connective tissue and this is a coarse ground product. So it could be a little chewy in your final or a little bit of sinew and stuff you, you hit in your final product. Okay, there's the pork ground through. I'm gonna take my little bit of beef I'm going to grind it through this coarse plate, then I'm going to run it through a finer plate afterwards. Okay, got that fine plate in there, drop this beef in for another run through. Okay, that's it for the lean meat. Then I'm going to weigh out 100 grams of fat and cube it up into half inch cubes. And I just pull it out of the freezer so it's nice and hard. Tear, hunk a chunk of fat, 120 grams. So we'll get rid of this skinny edge and that'll do. They're going to pop out of this sausage, just kind of like a um, mortadella or something like that. In goes our spices. Get this all blended together. Mm. Stanley has some good recipes. Okay, got that loosely mixed in there. Now I'm going to grab our bacteria culture, which I just put a little water in. You don't want too much water because the objective of these type of sausages is for them to lose water. A little bacteria added to our mix. Mix it in, distribute that bacteria all over the place so it can grow fruitfully and 
produce acid and lower the pH. Now you are technically supposed to like season this mass, put it in the refrigerator for four days and then dry for three weeks. So we're not really gonna ferment this one. Usually in a fermented sausage, you ferment it at a warm temperature, like 20 degrees, 68 degrees Fahrenheit for a couple days. This one, we're just gonna do that in the refrigerator, looks like, and then dry for three weeks and apply a cold smoke for two days. I might do the cold smoke first so we don't get any mold though. There we go. That's sticky enough? I think so. Okay, now we're gonna take our little cubes of fat. We're just gonna toss them in there. There we go. Now I'm gonna stuff these into some beef middles. So we'll chuck it in the sausage stuffer. Beef middles have been soaking in a little water and a little bit of vinegar. The vinegar helps get rid of that kind of smell that they have. We'll stuff them into there and pop them in the refrigerator. Doesn't that look good before I stick it in the sausage stuffer? Grab our beef middle, stick her on the horn. Leave a little bit out off the end so we can tie tire closed. Catch the first little bit that comes out. Oops. Okay. Beef bedle is nice and full. Voila. There's the end of that. I'm just gonna work the last little bit out. Cut that off, but leave ourselves a little bit to tie to. So there we go. We got our serve a lot. Get in there nice and firm. Some of those little air pockets out. Don't want no air in our sausage. Look for a couple more. Okay, beauty, tire shut. A double knot at this end. Tie that over on itself. Again on this end. There we go, I'm gonna get a little tag for it and a weight on it. And then we'll stick it in the fridge for four days. And then cold smoke and dry. All right, here's the serve -a lot pulled out of the cooler after a few days. Now it says to dry this for three weeks at 10 degrees and then cold smoke it afterwards. Um, I would do that in the reverse order. I would cold smoke it first, but we're gonna follow the recipe. Dry for three weeks at 10 degrees. Into the chamber it goes. It's actually gonna be 12 degrees. I'm a little bit warmer than it should be, so. But I only got one chamber. All right, I've been waiting patiently, and our serve lot has hit its target weight. There it is. Pop her out of there and have a bite, a slice. Okay, I nearly forgot a step in the process. We have to cold smoke this serve lot slash summer sausage for two days. I think I said earlier I would have done the process different because you can see there's a little bit of white mold on there that ended up developing, but if you'd have done this ahead of time, there'd have been no mold. But... We're going to follow the steps. Smoke start and roll as you can see, so it's just going to get smoked every four hours for two days. The time has finally come. It's been cold smoking for the last couple days. Uh, kind of four hour stints as often as I could remember, then I'd bring it in at night. The outside has dried up a little bit. Definitely has a nice smoky flavor. Okay, so we kind of have achieved a nice dark mahogany tone. Looks pretty good. Let's cut into it and see how it tastes. Bring in for the close-up cut. Look at those. <laughs> Some nice big white pieces of fat popping right out of there. Looking at my little camera screen, the color looks pretty good. Yeah, the outside's a little drier than the inside, but that's okay. It's not like it's goopy or anything like that. So let's peel this casings off and dive into them. Just make a little score line down our sausage and peel this beef bung or beef middle off of here. Sorry, beef middle, not beef bung. I just did the Rosette de Lyon and uh, it was much easier to peel. I wonder if this cold smoking uh, has made this difficult. 
I feel like uh, the couple days I cold smoked it there, it's pretty real dry in the uh, middle of winter in Alberta. So I feel like it was maybe too dry during those two days of cold smoking and this casing really got sticking to the sausage there as we smoked it. it. Smells really darn good as I peel this casing off though. Okay, after a bit of a struggle, we have it off. That's time to taste our servalet which is Thuringer, which is summer sausage. Mm, and it smells good and I can't wait to do it. Yeah, it looks good. Everything's bound really well. It's not coming apart. Cheers to sausage. Well, Mr. Marinsky's, or the Marinsky brothers, got this recipe right. It tastes like a traditional American summer sausage. Lots of tang, very creamy chunks of fat. Now, I, I skipped, if I remember right, I'm going back a couple months here now. I think I skipped salting and hardening the fat. This fat's very creamy and it's like almost soft versus like a dense hard fat would be kind of the other result if I would have salted and dried that's that back fat. But this is very good. So if you want to make a traditional servalot American summer sausage, Thuringer, this is a great recipe. I love fermented sausages. They have that nice tang, really enhances the spices. And I really hope you guys liked the episode. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And we do a video like this, this year out of 1001 greatest sausage recipes every day in March. Thanks for watching guys. Happy sausage making. Mm -hmm.